to keep the records and to write our story. Perhaps a 50th anniversary is the time to consider again how we record these special achievements of our people for posterity and for the nurture of our future generations. Dennis Emmanuel Brown is said to have made 78 albums for some 37 record labels. I said said to have because the figures differ based on who you talk to. Sometimes he released six or seven albums in a single year. If you do the multiplication, friends, you will see that he too has written well over 600 compositions. And some argue he has produced more reggae classics than anyone else. Sorry, friends. <laughs> It was in the mid-1970s that Dennis Brown's music, his lovable personality, humility, and sincerity began increasingly to attract fans in the thousands, myself included. I was then a radio announcer at that great institution known as the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation. D. Brown had a clear philosophy of life and he lived it and stated it repeatedly in all conversations and emphatically in his song. If I can that 
So he said, love and hate can never be friends, oh no. Here I come with love and not hatred. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow I all the days of thy life. Envy no one, no wish to be with no evil men. For there will come the day when you will be whipped by the Father's hand. Live up Ruth's children, live up Rasta children. My head is anointed and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow I all the days of thy life. Those were the standards he set for himself and he was never willing to rest on his past successes. A very reflective man, analyzing both his musical and his life performance, he was always striving to improve both, to do better and more. He was not always successful though on the personal level. Though few artists have been as consistent throughout a 30-year career as Dee Brown, and his releases cap an incredible lifelong performance while serving as a wonderful record of one of Jamaica's great talents. Dennis's father, Arthur, was a regular featured actor and scriptwriter on several television productions. And we would sometimes have conversations as we passed through the JBC yard. He was such a dignified man, quiet and humble, just like Dennis, who loved him dearly. They were the kind of artists who let the work speak for itself. As the presenter for the popular television series, Where It's At, and subsequently the producer and presenter for the JBC Morning Feature, TCB, I encountered the top performing music artists regularly. TCB was then featuring over 90% Jamaican music on the playlist daily, at a time when Jamaican artists were struggling to be heard on radio. So we developed a really good relationship with many of the legendary reggae music performers. Dee Brown was a kind, loving, sincere, and a very inspired man. He came from a place of deep humility, conditioned by a strong spiritual desire to be in relationship with and to always represent his spiritual father and the 12 tribes of Israel. There was no performance where this was not acknowledged up front. And I quote, Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has this day been revealed to us in the personality of his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie. I greet you also through the 12 tribes of Israel that were scattered abroad, but now founded in the island of Jamaica by our beloved prophet God. This was his foundation and the blessing of Joseph was his. In Genesis 49, 22 to 24, we are told Joseph is a fruitful bow, even a fruitful bow by a well whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him, but his bow abode in strength and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel, end quote. Dennis shared in that song, Revolution, the challenges of this very challenging walk he had chosen to make as Joseph fighting the right revolution. <laughs> rising, getting ready to hear the familiar greeting as the MC begins his introduction. I remember the irrepressible joy and satisfaction, Dennis's and ours, as he delivered an unforgettable set, bathed in the rays of that brilliant sunrise. Perhaps though, the most intact memory is the most personal. I remember that young man on the hospital bed at the National Chest Hospital. His eyes sparkling in a child's frail body, but even then, still smiling a generous welcome. The raspy, chuckling voice saying, Miss Wynne, you surprised me, man. And I, yes, Dennis, 
i had to come.